This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effect plugins, titling, video editing, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial, and we're going to do something a little bit different in this tutorial. Normally when I talk about point updates, I'm talking about major point updates like 8.7, 8.8, 8.9. In this tutorial though, we're talking about the update to Media Composer version 8.9.3. Now you're probably thinking, well Kev, why would you do a point update tutorial showing me what's new? Because normally they're just bug fixes. Well, believe it or not, there are a whole bunch of new features in 8.9.3 that if you don't know about them, can really enhance your workflow. And in this lesson, I'm gonna show you a bunch of them and you're gonna see why this is a very welcomed update to Avid Media Composer. Now, before we go on, I wanna remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, now before we get rolling, I do want to give a shout to all the Mac users out there that as of this release of Media Composer version 8.9.3, we now have support for High Sierra 10.13. So if you just purchased a new Mac or if you've updated your, you know, your existing Mac, you can now install and work with Media Composer as of today. Okay, so let's command or alt and tab into Avid Media Composer. And let's get rolling by talking about parameter adjustments. Now I'm just going to call up a 3D warp effect here. I'm just going to take it, drag it, and drop it down onto our shot. I want to thank Edit Stock for the use of this clip in this tutorial. And you can check out all of their great projects and media that you can purchase and download to practice editing with at editstock.com. Now, as soon as I drop that effect on, you'll notice immediately inside the effects editor, things look a little bit different because we now have the ability to get in and be a little bit more precise by getting in and adding decimal values to our parameter adjustments. So a great new feature just to get let us get in and be a little bit more precise with our effects work. Now we also have the ability with certain parameters to get in and actually set those parameters a little bit more than we were able to before. So keep that in mind. And I also want to show you another situation where we can get in and be even more precise, and that is working with frame flex. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this red clip that's a larger than HD clip. Clip comes to us courtesy of Artbeats. You can check them out as always at artbeats.com. I'm just going to right click and come to the source settings. And I'm going to come down, and I've always had a bit of a problem with the slider values here just because I just find them to be just a little bit too. They're a little bit oversensitive if I take them and just drag them. You don't really have the ability to be too precise without actually going in and just punching values in, you know, with the keyboard. Well, now with the X, Y, size, and Z rotation parameters, if I hold shift on the keyboard, you'll see how precise I can actually be with my adjustments. This is me holding shift, not holding shift. Holding shift, not holding shift. So you'll see this is just another great enhancement just that you can be more precise without having to punch in values that you might not know off the top of your head. Okay, let me just cancel out of that. Now let's talk about another new feature that's gonna help you inside your timeline. And for that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to come to the command palette. Let's go to tools, let's come to command palette. You'll find it in the edit section right over here. It's called move clip up, move clip down. Now, how does that work exactly? Well, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to take part of this clip from Edit Stock. I'm going to copy it up here into the preview window, and I'm just going to drop it down on Video Track 4. Okay, And I'm going to take a smaller version of the clip here, and let's just drop that onto Video Track 3. Okay, You'll see where I'm going with this in just a second. Now, what I'm going to do with those shortcuts now set to the up and down arrow keys on my keyboard is I'm going to come over to the Smart Tools. Let's just choose our Overwrite Smart Tool and I'm going to select this clip. Now, normally what we're accustomed to doing is holding control or command, trying to snap it straight up. Is it going to be exactly where we need it to be? You know, I need it to be precisely above where it is now. Bit of a headache. Okay. Well, now with those commands set, all I now need to do is simply use the up and down arrow keys on the keyboard 
to get in and make whatever adjustments I need to make. Okay, now I'm just going to undo that. Now you'll notice that each one of those steps is considered an undo, so keep that in mind as you're going. Now I went one step too far. Let me just redo what I just did here, just so we get our clip back here, because I want to point out something that's important about this tool. And that is that I've been using the Overwrite Smart Tool. And when I was doing that, it was taking the clip and it was dropping it right in over top of this shot, over top of this shot. And as it was going, if there wasn't a video layer above it, it was making layers as it went. Well, what's important to keep in mind about this command is that it's directly related to the Smart Tool you have chosen. So if I choose the Insert or the Splice In Smart Tool, I select the same clip and I press up on the keyboard, it's going to take that clip, move it up, and push everything on that layer down the timeline. So keep that in mind when you're using this command. Okay, let me just remove these clips from here. I'm going to need this clip here for its audio in just a second. Okay, let's talk about a tool that got a slight modification, and that is the Fast Menu right here to call up the Tool Palette. You'll now see it's no longer a Fast Menu. I can simply click on that button to call up this Tool Palette. But what's also going on with your tool palette, I'm just going to head back to my settings here, you'll notice that we have a setting right here for the tool palette. What I could do is I could duplicate this setting and create a whole new tool palette. And what's going to happen is, is that whichever one is the active tool palette is what will appear when I click on the tool palette button. Now to go along with that, if I had, let's say, three or four different tool palettes with tools based on different workflows, audio workflow, color correction, whatever, you could simply double click on each one of those tool palettes over here inside of your settings. If you had multiple monitors, you can then position those tool palettes wherever you wanted to and have all of those tools at your fingertips at the same time. So that's a bit of a different workflow using this tool palette that to be honest has been around for like a million years and they're just taking it, just enhancing it just that little bit more. Okay, now let's talk about one thing that's bugged me for a long time and that is matte keys in different frame rate projects. So for example, here's the situation. I have this project here that has a timeline in it that has a matte key in it that is a 1080i matte key. Now previously I was not able to take this sequence and promote it to be a 23976 sequence because it has those matte keys on it. Well, not anymore. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this sequence, I'm gonna option or alt and drag it up here into my bin. And I'm simply going to double click on it. I'm given the usual warning saying, well, this is a different frame rate sequence. Do you want to update it? I'm going to say yes. And what I now have is a 23976 sequence with this Mac key on it that has a temporal change made to it. So this is a fantastic new feature, especially if you're bringing different sequences into different frame rate projects. Now Mac keys do support temporal changes to them. So you can do this quickly and easily. Okay, so let's talk about the last big feature inside of the 8.9.3 update, and I'm talking about Dynamic Shuttle. Now, before we do that, I do need to come back to my sequence that I was working with here that has audio, very nice. Place called Buffalo Mountain. And well, let's it, just make sure that beauty, it's all I can hear it for one thing, and I'm just gonna delete these other timelines that I know that I don't need. And we're going to head right back to the command palette because again, this is a command that you do need to set up. Let's call it the command palette. And where we're going to go for this new command is to the play category of the command palette. You'll see over here in the second column, we have both the commands, dynamic play forward and dynamic play reverse. Now what I did, much like I had done before, if I come to my keyboard settings here, where are they? There they are, is that I have them mapped to the right arrow key and the left arrow key, seemingly appropriately enough. And let's just close our keyboard. Let's close our command palette. Now, here's how you have to think of dynamic shuttle. You actually have to think of having a shuttle in front of you. And what we're going to do is we're going to slow down his speaking very dynamically. And you have to think of it as that when we hit that left arrow to start the sequence playing in reverse, that's the equivalent of taking one of those jog shuttle wheels and clicking it one click to the left to start playing it back one times in reverse. And how do you then get that to slow down? You start to bring it back to the right just a little bit and a little bit and a little bit just to slow it down by incremental values. So let me show you how this works. Let's come back. I'm going to use that left arrow command. And what I'm going to do is when I want to actually start having this dynamically slow down, 
I'm going to bring it back to the right by holding Option or Alt on the keyboard and pressing the right arrow. Let me show you what I mean. Let's put it in reverse. There it goes playing. Now watch this. Let's now hold Option or Alt, and I'm just going to start slowing this down. You'll see he's getting much slower and slower and slower and slower. And slower. And there we go. Now, I've taken my hands off the keyboard altogether, and I could just let this play for as long as I wanted to. I'm just going to stop that. So let me show you how that works again. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the volume up just so that I can hear it a little bit better. We're going to come back in. We're going to set this up. Now, again, much like we just done, I'm going to play it in reverse. Once we're playing in reverse, I'm then going to hold Option or Alt on the keyboard, and I'm going to start pressing the right dynamic shuttle command to then start slowing it down. Let's play it in reverse. Let's hold Option. And now let's start to bring it almost back to pause by hitting that right arrow key. Okay, there we go. Look how slow he's going right there. Now one last thing that I do want to mention about Dynamic Shuttle is that there are some settings for it that you can find inside of your timeline settings. Okay, so I've talked about the main new features inside of 8.9.3 and as you can see on the screen right now, I've given you a brief list of the other feature updates and I should point out that normally with a version like 8.9.3, you wouldn't be getting as many updates as you're getting now. So this is another great thing with editing with media composers that even when you're getting into the point point updates, there still is the chance to get some great new feature updates inside of your editing application. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.